live in an unknown northwest Arkansas apartment complex. It is the Etc. Show in living color and quadraphonic sound. I wish it was. Wouldn't that be state of the art? So guys, sorry, I'm a little under the weather this week. Oh, it sucks to be sick. Yes, it does. But what little public I have awaits of the future E-list celebrity known as the Etc. Show with all these. Starting off, just found out today, by the way, the it is, uh, I think, October 11th, 2012. Alex Karras. Yes, maybe some of you people may know who Alex Karras is. He was a football player, but uh, after he got out of football, he ended up, well, becoming an actor. Why not, right? Anybody can pretty much be an actor nowadays. Uh, I still hold that. I should be in pictures. Me. But until then, needless to say, he was in Blazing Saddles. One of my favorite Mel Brooks movies of all time, and Webster. Aw, he was the dad in Webster. Can't stand Webster. <laughs> I still can't. I, if I found him, I'd put him in a garbage chute. But needless to say, he played the dad in the few seasons that it was on. So, rest in peace, sir, on that one. Okay, some of you people that know me know that I have ADD. Well, okay, maybe you don't know I have ADD, but... For a 45-year-old to still have ADD, it's uh, it's something. But it's more something if it's a big piece of scientific equipment. Yeah, that's right, okay. NASA goes off and forks out millions and could be billions of dollars to get that Mars rover up in intact and over Mars, right? So it's going off and, and doing its little thing. And, well, it dug through some soil and... Stopped dead in its tracks by a shiny object. We don't know what the shiny object is, and it appears neither does Mars Curiosity either, which is the name of the uh, Mars rover type thing in the first place. Excuse me a second here. This, uh, this show may or may not be brought to you by the Peanuts and Charles Schultz estate or Crisp and Clean No Caffeine 7-Up. Nah, that's what I take when I'm sick. Ha ha ha, Chris Bidgan, never mind. None of you people are going to get that reference anyway. Okay, <clears throat> so, ADD Space Rovers, what next, hmm? Okay. Oh, all right, how about this one? Soda. I just had a little bit of soda, didn't I? How many of you people drink soda um, once a week? I at least drink it once a week. I shouldn't. But I do. Why? Because it tastes damn good. Well, I guess there's going to be some new ruling coming out that they are going to have to show the caloric intake of whatever pop you're drinking on the vending machines. Yeah, that's right. You know, everybody's going off and saying, uh, well, what was it? Is it New York that's having the soda ban? Something about nothing bigger than a 16 ounce? I could have sworn I thought I read that somewhere. People here, okay, let's bring up something here. First of all, I think personally, big corporations are dumbing us down as consumers and trying to take away, well, I don't know, some rights. Now, I know you're saying, well, what the heck you mean? Well, okay, look, personally, in the 80s, yeah, in, in the 80s, I was a soda drinker like you wouldn't believe. I could go through a case of uh, Pepsi. Pepsi was my thing after the... Uh, what was it? After the New Coke fiasco, I switched to Pepsi. Remember that? Some of you might. And uh, I could go through a case, oh, I don't know, in about three to four days. Yeah, that's a lot, isn't it? But, uh, you know, and of course, weight gain and all that stuff. Uh, personally, it's all supposed to be about moderation anyway, right? Moderation. Have one once in a while, it's all right. It's not going to kill you yet. Now, you know, I will tell you what will kill you, though, is the combination of diet soda and pepperoni pizza. Do not take those two things together. It will releases a toxin. Yeah, you don't feel it right away, but over time, yeah, it will kill you. See, I just maybe saved your life. Point is, is I know everybody wants cost-effective, and, you know, all the corporations are trying to get as much profits as possible. 
But I personally think that maybe if they would go back to actually having sugar in the soda instead of high fructose corn syrup, we wouldn't have half the obesity problems we have. Let's face it, when I was a kid, I went outside. We didn't have video games. We really didn't until like about, oh, I don't know. I mean, Atari was what? When I was 12 or 13 years old, they had Atari? You know, but so what? I still went outside and played because that's what you did. Most of these kids nowadays, they, they don't want to do that. Um, thankfully enough, no, most of my kids don't really do that. You know, they, they do go outside, and that's great. So, you know what? All right, soda pop companies. Get rid of the high fructose bullshit. Put back the sugar back into the cans of pop. Tell everybody, hey, you know, don't drink so dang much of it so you won't get so fat. You know, the fructose, you can't burn off so much like you could with sugar. Sugar went like that in your system. Fructose sits there. There. My only scientific note of the day. Let's see. How about my favorite 70s band? Led Zeppelin. Oh, I love Led Zeppelin. I do, I do, I do. I have all their albums on vinyl. Yeah, all their albums on vinyl. I, I, I like all of them, to tell you the truth. And anything they keep coming out with is great. Celebration Day. Sounds like a promo I'm doing for them, right? Celebration Day is the new movie CD slash DVD of the 2007 London O2 concert reunion one-off that they did. Well, I guess there was a press conference and there was a little bit of uncomfortableness when the question was brought up, hey guys, will you guys get back together? Robert Plant actually said, you know what, I'll leave the door open for a reunion. And to hear that from Plant lately is actually pretty cool considering he did that thing with Alison Krauss that was okay and, and he's been doing the weird solo stuff lately, which I'm not too big of a fan on. Uh, but Jimmy Page went off and said, nope, and pretty much shut the door on that. And I'm thinking, they're going, you know what? What have you really got to lose, Mr. Jimmy Page? I mean, you've got millions of dollars, and if you don't have millions of dollars, let's just say you're at least, you know, financially secure for life, okay? I didn't get to see you in 1980. I had tickets. It's not my fault John Bonham died. God rest his soul. I say one last U.S. tour go-around. You don't have to go into, like, Fargo, North Dakota or something, eh? Make it a 30 or 40 U.S. city tour, damn it, because I want to see you guys before I die. That's right. And you know what? I wish Mr. Page would be seeing this, and I know he's not going to, unless one of you friends go off and send it to him. But damn it, Jimmy, I want one of my dreams fulfilled. I want to see the mighty Zeppelin back. I know John's not there, but Jason is a damn competent drummer. I saw him in Foreigner in 05 and have a signed drum head, which I'll show someday, on my other show, Psycho's Platters, in a CD. Subscribe. Lastly, guys, lastly, I could care less that Lindsay Lohan and her mother, Dina, were fighting. I could care less that Nicki Minaj and Mariah Carey are going... <laughs> I'm going to kill you <laughs> on the set of American Idol. Really, people? Who cares? This is not real life. And I don't like any of them anyway. So, I have a solution. It was a fun solution back in the 90s. It needs to come back, ladies and gentlemen. Three words. Celebrity death match. Celebrity death match. Come on. Let's throw them in a ring and see what happens. I missed that show on MTV. Sounds like it could come back again. Celebrity deathmatch. I'd like to see if none of them actually survived. That would be even funnier yet to boot. Wouldn't miss much. No tears in this man's beer. All right, guys. Hopefully I'll feel better next week. You take care. God bless. Pray for me. Pray for your friends. Pray for your loved ones. Because every day... This is a special day to each of us. God bless. Take care.